Welcome to another episode of The Theater Podcast, intimate personal conversations with theater's biggest names. I am your host, Alan Seals. And I am your... Oh, I forgot what it was. I'm your producer, Jillian Hockman. Uh, wow. And I thought I needed a nap. It's going well. <laughs> this episode is with Sarah Stiles, who is currently starring in Tootsie, the musical on Broadway. One of the best musicals out there, of course, nominated for, for the Tony Award for uh, Best Musical in 2019. And she got a nomination for her role as Sandy Lester in the musical as well. She's just phenomenal. She has this patter song. You haven't seen it yet. I have not seen the show yet. She has a patter song to end all patter songs. Yeah. And it comes back several times as a recurring theme in, it, the, in the show. You know what? I saw her perform it at Broadway Con. Oh, I you? remember this. Oh, my goodness. It is was, so good. Yeah, I remember it being really just like, how did she learn that? Yeah, she talks about that in the episode, that yeah. how nervous she was the first time she had to perform it. But she's also very busy in terms of filming as well. She is in Billions, season four on Showtime. She's in Get Shorty, season three, which just wrapped. Um, that's on Epics. And uh, that is that just goes to show you, she tells these stories um, that having great relationships in the industry pays off because she is either she has either been rehearsing or performing in Tootsie while leaving the state to go film mm-hmm. other things. Or yeah, while she was out of town with Chicago, with the out of town with Tootsie, she, they flew her back to New York mm-hmm. to do billions. So kids, make friends wherever you go because you never know who's going to be a fan of the TV show you're on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, on Get Shorty. For those who have seen it, they know you know there's uh, lots of nudity in Get Shorty, it, her included. And we actually get into that a little bit when when we were talking about that. She was like, "Well, it's not the first time I did a nude scene," and she reminded me that uh, the first time she actually did anything like that was in another Showtime show called "I'm Dying Up Here." And um, I just thought it was funny. She mentioned that she watched it. She made her mom watch it. With her. With her. Which is yeah. just baller right there. Right. Made her mom watch it because she was so proud of it. And yeah, I think that takes some confidence. It does. And if you're going to do scenes like that and you're going to show off your acting abilities in every different scenario, why not? Why not be proud of your art and what you do? It's interesting that while well, we were talking about it, she said that um, it's... Her and like Sarah Styles herself is not like that. She she would be uncomfortable, but as a character, as mm-hmm. each of these characters, it makes total sense. It progresses the story. It's not gratuitous, and like it's it's part of what the character does. Yeah, so if, it feels if the person would be doing it anyway, yeah, it's it fits in. Whereas yeah. if it, she also mentions if the character wouldn't do something like that, it would be really awkward, it'd be really weird. Like she wouldn't be able to do it with Sandy. In Tootsie, because right. Sandy is a neurotic, crazy lady who wouldn't think that way. Right, right. Well, everybody, um, before we get into the episode, please visit us at ttp.fm. Yeah, that's right. We got a short domain oh, to yeah, point we to the did. long Less typing, <laughs> Less more <time>. listening. <laughs> ttp.fm. And as always, ttp.fm slash Patreon to show your support for uh, those of those of you who are at the $5 tier or higher. You got notification that we were going to interview Sarah and uh, incorporated some of the questions into the session here. So um, please visit us there. Subscribe, rate, share with your friends, etc., etc. All that stuff we always say. Now, please enjoy this episode with Sarah Stiles. This two-time Tony nominee made her Broadway debut in 2003, stepping into the roles of Kate Monster and Lucy the Slut in Avenue Q. She's been involved in other shows and national tours, such as the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, On a Clear Day You Can See Forever, Into the Woods at Shakespeare in the Park, and Hand to God. Now starring as Sandy Lester in Tootsie the Musical, Sarah Stiles, welcome to the Theater Podcast. Oh, it's so nice to be here, but you kind of got one of the facts wrong. I did? Yeah, dude. What? What, what, what? My Broadway debut was Spelling Bee. No kidding. Yeah. My Broadway debut is going on for- Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Do you need to re-record it? No, 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 no. just talk about it. No, right? I want to- I want to. <laughs> is, that, is that one of the facts that's wrong? IBDB.com. Yeah. Sarah Styles. So we're pulling this up here. Uh-huh. Because you don't believe me. That's what's happening right now. Avenue Q is listed 2003 to 2000. Oh, I read it wrong. You went in 07. Yeah. 
Ugh, yeah, dude. That'll teach me to be totally wasted <laughs> no, when I do my research. Right? Oh, man. Never again. <laughs> no, I went on for, um, uh, who was first? Sarah Salzburg for the matinee and, and Celia at night. That was my Broadway debut. Really? On a Sunday. Matinee and evening. Wow. With no put-ins. It was pretty Did awesome. you at least have costumes? No, I used theirs. Really? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. How how long was the show open at that point? It been well. Kate Weatherhead was the sw- was the cover for them, and she went off to do Sarah Plain and Tall, and so they had me in as like a vacation swing, not really thinking I was going to go on because I was there for like a month, and I went on a ton. Wow. Yeah, because those ladies got sick. It was allergy season. <laughs> they were out a lot, <laughs> but it was amazing because the- and then I booked the tour right from that. Yeah. They came like Bill Finn came and saw the um the evening show, and he apparently called the stage manager the next day and goes, when's that Sally Shrugs going back on? Because <laughs> he knew it was an SS. He was so close. But Sally, yet so far Sally away. Sally Shrugs. So still people from that company <laughs> call me Sally Shrugs. Sometimes. That's like, that should be like your alter ego. I know. It, it yeah. sounds like a cute cartoon, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, like if you have too like much Sally to drink. Sally Shrugs. Yeah. We could, yeah, we'll write a whole cartoon with her. She's a little insecure. She's just starting out. She's very excited. Why died? <laughs> have you ever you done about? have you ever done VO like that? Yeah, dude, or, I did one today. Yeah. I'm on Sunny Day. Yeah. <laughs> did you really? And Steven Universe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Don't don't get drunk while you're researching. <laughs> I was not drunk for the record. Um so let's talk about your early stuff. You were actually born in Massachusetts, but raised in New Hampshire, yeah? Yes. Okay. So tell me about that story. Uh about my birth. Yes, tell me how. how I would, they actually, that, it is kind of a story. I come from very like crunchy granola parents, and I was you? born at home. My parents were staying, were, you know, they didn't have their own, they're very poor, <laughs> they didn't have their own place. They were staying at a friend's house and uh, through the, all the pregnancy. And then I was born to a room full of hippies to an audience. You had like a, a doula and then do the yeah, natural all, birth. Oh, Not yeah. you, your mom. Yeah, yeah, she was just naked, you know giving birth to me and I would yeah I tumbled out and and ta-da I, it was my first audience I've got two kids that are relatively little and I went down a rabbit hole one night of watching these at home oh, like yeah. nature births like birth into a stream oh and, yeah and it's not that something. feels like maybe a little bit unsanitary. Birthing into a stream? It was just like, I want my baby to be <laughs> into the most natural place. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I feel like if that was an option, my mom probably would have done that. I think yeah. anything's really an option. I guess it is. wanted it to. But yeah, yeah. No, there's pictures of me like hours old on the lawn. Like, you know, they're just holding me in the grass. Wow. Yeah. That That's Cute. It's yeah. I think yeah. I'll, I'll call it cute. It's cute. It's a little weird. Are but you, it all adds to the story of today. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Do you think you want to do that with your kids one day? Um, Maybe. I don't listen. I don't think I'm having my own kids. My boyfriend has two fabulous children, and yeah. I take care of them. But um, yeah, I don't think I'm having kids. Yeah, you never know. Never say never. I don't know. I'm kind of old, man. I had a big birthday last week. Till those. Oh, what the big two o. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, double that. Two yeah. one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'll oh yeah, tell you're, you're yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're older than me. That's right. No, I turned forty on Thursday. Oh, happy Dude. late birthday! Yeah, What'd yeah. You do? I'm proud fun? of it. I was working. I was in Vancouver shooting season three of Get Shorty, and then I took a red eye that night and to fly back so that I could make it back in for the Friday night of Tootsie. Oh. <laughs> It was kind of awesome, though. It, like, it's there's something great about working on a birthday, and I was doing two really awesome jobs well, yeah. on different sides of the country. I took a red eye In bag. a different country. I took a red eye back two weeks ago, and I oh, still haven't recovered. Yeah, I was kind of, I was a little out of it yesterday, but I feel better today. But yeah, working two jobs, two big jobs. Big I didn't jobs, know Get yeah. Shorty worked at, uh, filmed in Vancouver. Well, they didn't. The first season we were in um, Albuquerque, which was super fun because New Mexico is like, Beautiful, and we did lots of traveling and excursions on weekends. And then we shot in LA last season, and now we're in Vancouver. I don't know; they can't figure out where they want to be, so we keep going. Well, I'll I'll just go wherever they are. That's nice, though. They just fly out. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a nice um, flight from here. The direct is Cathay Pacific, so it's the flight that goes to Hong Kong. So you get like dim sum on the 
on the plane. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of fabulous. I love I love those types of airlines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you the feel slip, so baller. Slippers and the, oh, yeah. the masks All and the, everything. All the lotion. You're like, I don't put lotion on my hands, but I'm going to. Because they gave it to <laughs> me, damn it. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> so, okay. Born in Mass. Mm-hmm. Raised in New Hampshire. Uh-huh. What was your what was your childhood like? Where where did you get into the performing and whatnot? Um, I first I I did gymnastics when I was little, which you know I wanted to be more performing than it actually was a sport. So I felt like um, <laughs> I think that was sort of my first like oh people are applauding that feels great. Let's keep doing that. And then I started doing some dance. I mean I grew up in a very small town in New Hampshire, and there was not a lot of options for me. Um, But my uh, fourth grade teacher, was that fourth grade? No, fifth grade, um, Mrs. Grandmont, uh, thought that I would enjoy theater. And so she convinced my mother to, um, she circled a bunch of like ads in the paper for different summer camps. And she convinced my mom to set me up with those. And so I, I did, that's when I started in fifth grade. And then I just fell deeply, deeply in love. I remember the, there was one week called Broadway Week, and it was all like really, you know, give my regards to Broadway and Hernando's Hideaway, and like we mm-hmm. were learning all these songs, and um, and that's where I sort of found my voice, and I was totally hooked from then on. And like, how old were you then? Uh, that was that was fifth grade. How old are you in fifth grade? I don't know. Uh, like, eight, like eight, <laughs> eleven. Two, two fingers. Jillian says you're, you're two? two fingers old. I think you're two. No, I don't know. Eleven? Yeah. Yeah, eleven sounds about right. Yeah. Pre-pubescent, right. mind you. I think I, I think I got my period like backstage. Yeah, I actually totally did. <laughs> Can we talk about this? Is this inappropriate? TMI. Get ready, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'm very. I'm. It's a, all of my firsts. <laughs> <laughs> We're on stage. We're on stage. Yeah. Oh man, I did a, a local production of of Aladdin years ago. And it wasn't called Aladdin because they did couldn't afford the rights to Aladdin. Oh, stop it. But um, I was like 22, 23 uh-huh. or something like that. And Jasmine was six, 15 or 16 uh-huh. and had never kissed him. But I was her first kiss. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah. How old were you? I was I was like early 20s. I was out of college. And, he, and she was 15? Yeah, like 15 or 16. I don't know. This sounds like an inappropriate story. I mean, that's where the story <laughs> ends. Because... <laughs> We're still friends on Facebook, so okay, I don't good. It worked out okay. She yeah. wasn't. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, that is weird when that happens. I don't. My first kiss was not on stage, thank God. But I've done it a lot since then. The, <laughs> the most awkward, not I guess not awkward, enjoyable slash okay, I'm kind of enjoying this uh-huh. moment is I was Kaniki in Greece. And there's like three pages of script where it's like Kaniki and Rizzo make out. Make out, yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, it is. Yeah, during whole scenes, right? Yeah. I did yeah. Grease a couple times. I did Grease with Leslie Kritzer and Andy Carl. Yeah. Yeah, it was a – that how crazy. And that's a lot of groping. Yeah. You just kind of go with it. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was reading that you originally wanted to be a fashion designer or thought you could be one. Where were you reading that? It was on the internet. Oh, man. I don't know who said that. I mean, it, listen, I love fashion. I do love clothes. I have never really wanted to do anything else but this. Maybe I said that at one point because I thought, oh, I should have, a, I should say I want to do something else. So if this doesn't work out, there's like, I'm not completely delusional. But yeah, so I pick fashion. That seems like another <laughs> really steady. No, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I love, I would love, I have a dream about getting some time in my life to open up so that I can take some uh, like sewing classes. Hmm. I really think it'd be fun to make my own clothes. I'd probably wind up in like crazy tutus on every red carpet, but I'd be okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Make your own stuff and yeah, do like start a fashion line with Bob Mackie. Yeah, totally. I mean, I had, I did, I knit for a while and I would sell, I would crochet and knit hats and sell them to like chorus girls. That was like a survival job. No, for in. real, yeah. like made my rent for a number of months doing that. Yeah. Uh, That's sort of crazy, but they had lots of bright flowers on them. And I mean, so you're one of those people that can just knit 
you knit a whole thing in like 10 minutes. I turn around and you're like, okay, here's a hat. Yeah, I am kind of like that. Yeah. Because I don't follow patterns. So I choose really chunky yarn and just get it done quick. I don't have the patience. Like the people that can sit and like knit a sweater, I can't do that. I can't follow the I can't follow the pattern. I don't so, even know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I just keep going until something. I'm like, oh, that'll hold. I have never. I, I, well, I've held the, what the chopsticks. What are they called? The chopstick needles. Needle, yeah. needle. Yes, yeah, they're needles. yeah, sewing needles. Yeah, I've held them, and I I don't know what to do with them. Yeah, I think. It would be kind of fun to like sit on the subway and listen to my podcast yeah. and knit a little bit. But yeah, I, it's I play very relaxing. Instead. I could teach you. We could have a session. Not right now. It might take a little longer than well, that. I don't have any chopsticks with me. Yeah, you're right. So. You're right. So. Do you, do you, could you actually use chopsticks or do you need a little hook thing on the end? You definitely can't use chopsticks. Or I don't know. <laughs> no, I bet I you do. could. I don't know. Maybe. I've like, never take tried a, it. You could like MacGyver this together. Take chopsticks yeah. and a paper clip. Okay, yeah. With some tape. No, oh, you're talking about like a crochet hook. Oh, is there a difference? Yeah, because the because a knitting needle doesn't have the hook on it. What? I know. You Am I blow ruining? My mind Am right I? Now. Oh, good. That's the first one. Let's see how many times I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna learn things today. Get I, ready. I will. I've learned that my facts are wrong <laughs> about pretty much everything that's come out of my mouth so far. <laughs> What, what's your name? Sally Shrugs. Sally Shrugs. Just call yes. me Sally. Sally Shrugs, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's start then with Spelling Bee. Uh-huh. Because that was your Broadway debut. Yes. What did? When did you move to New York? That was, so Spelling Bee oh. was 05, you said. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember the year of that. It was a long, long time ago. You were like, like, but were you in New York years before you landed um, the job or what? I got there in 2000. Yeah. Because remember, we all thought that the world was going to end in 2000. And my mom was oh, really right. freaked out about me being here. But I was like, I think it'll be okay. But I'll just avoid Times Square just in case. Um, yeah. I got there like, I don't know, fall right before the 2000. And um, I did a bunch of, my first job was a non-equity tour of Titanic. And then I booked a lot of regional stuff. And Spelling Bee, I was auditioning for Spelling Bee for like the San Francisco company, which I didn't get. But that's how I got the vacation swing because they liked me enough to just call, when they needed somebody to call me in like a few months later. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I'd been here a little while when that happened. That was so exciting. Your Broadway debut is so exciting. Do you, you still remember where you were when you got the call? Yeah, I was actually on tour with Tommy Toon doing Dr. Doolittle, and I had to leave. And we were like, oh, God, how are we going to get out of this? But they did. They let me They let me go. Where you were also doing puppet work. I know. Oh, my God, I totally was. <laughs> Santino keeps ribbing me about all of this. <laughs> I have a lot of puppets in my life. I don't know why. It's that, like three and two of them, some pretty graphic puppet, puppet, puppet sex. I was going to say, yeah, puppet Broadway. sex with two of them. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I never dreamed of of uh, holding that title. I think it's like a record. It should be. I don't know of any other shows. Yeah, right. Listeners, write in feedback. Yeah, at let the us theater know. Podcast, theaterpodcast dot com. How many puppet shows are there on Broadway, especially that have sex in them? Yeah, there that's we go. what I want to know. Yeah. Um. So that opened in twenty thirteen. Yeah, two thousand three. And that was my first time, like, replacing. Like, yes. I was a part of that company for a year. So that felt more, um, that was, like, a bigger deal, you know. And that was, yeah, that was pretty awesome doing that. But also kind of a weird entry because I my put-in happened on a Friday. And then that uh, the local one strike happened the next day. And they, that lasted, like, two weeks yeah. or something, or two and a half weeks. So I, um, yeah, that was a weird way to to join that company too, but that's that's what happened. But that's uh, we we talked to Ann Harada a couple weeks ago for this podcast, and and she was saying that like backstage, everyone's like it's very they're very everyone's friendly. It's like uh, it is like a family, contrary to what you see on stage. It's very like nice and polite and, and happy backstage. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean contrary to on stage? Well, on stage is all. Dirty and sex and internets for porn. And oh, oh, you mean Avenue Q specifically? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was such a great company. I loved being a part of that show. I really did. Yeah. 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 Cool, the, funny, weird people. It, it, gosh, I saw, I saw it. I've seen it, seen it multiple times over multiple years, and in different people every time, and it's just always, always so good. I'm so sad that it closed. Yeah, it had but a nice long run though. It did. It's pretty awesome. It did. It had a very good run. Mm -hmm. Um. 
And so then I guess that was oh, so that was oh five, and then uh, the next I guess Shakespeare in the Park is an off Broadway credit, yeah. I guess is that technically yeah, yeah. That, it's technically off Broadway. Yeah. So into the woods with some amazing people. Oh my god, yeah. That was um that was a dream. That was a dream role. Like for real. That getting that part, I got that part um again, kind of a weird story because we they were looking for something very specific physically that I was didn't match. And so they wouldn't see me for the longest time, but they had a really hard time casting it. And then um, they, you know, I, my manager just, who I've been with forever, my manager, Brian Leader, he just bullied them into seeing me. And finally I got, I got in there and he was like, you know, they're going to, you need to go in with like a solid take about what you want this girl to be because it's not the typical version. So I went in with like combat boots and this little like, you know, very goth. Like I went kind of goth and dark and a lot of heavy eyeliner and just went in like a murderer. (laughs) That was my (laughs) idea was that she was like really like intense and had, uh, and maybe a little scary. So I went in with that take and they, the cast, Heidi loved it at the public. And so they, they called me back in. It was very quick. Like they were starting rehearsals that Monday or Tuesday or something of the next week. And I went in, had a callback, a series of callbacks. Again, got another callback. I can say they were in rehearsal. I knew they were in rehearsal. Um, it was two days in at this point. Called in again. And there were like three of us and Gideon read with us, who was already cast as Jack. They were all downstairs rehearsing and they were, they were auditioning us upstairs. And it was, I said, it was like, the Bachelor or something. I'm like, who's going to get the rose? Because basically they said, you're going to go in. Stephen and James will be there along with the rest of the team. And um, you'll audition and then we will – everyone will leave and we'll let you know who is coming back to rehearsal. I mean, that's what it was. And it, and it was my birthday. Wow. And I got the rose. <laughs> <laughs> you got chosen. But I went directly into rehearsal that afternoon. That's awesome. Yeah. The, one of the first – People I met with was Amy. I walked up and Amy's like, sit, Amy Adams is just yeah. sitting on the couch. And I'm like, oh my God. But I knew Jesse because I had done on a clear day. So Jesse was a buddy of mine. So um, that felt like, that felt really good. Right. Right. How long did on a clear day run for? Not long. Yeah. It was so short. It was sad. We did, we worked on that because we did a bunch of, you know, we did it in New York Stage and Film and we had some workshops at the Vineyard. And, um, and I ultimately, I don't think it ran for more than like, two or three weeks once we opened. Wow. Yeah. It, it opened in the, the winter. In the winter time. Yeah, uh-huh. I was going to say, it was like around Christmas. Yeah, we yeah we were rehearsing all during that time. Yeah, and doing previews and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> does that, does that, kind of sucky. I mean, do you see that coming or was, is it kind of sting or you're um, open and you're like, ah, oh, the audience isn't full. What's going on? I don't know. I mean, I think you get, uh, you don't want to believe that. So you, I think we all really thought because of Harry that we would be there for a little while, but um, but we knew the show wasn't just it just wasn't gelling. It just wasn't like that that sort of magic feeling we had at New York Stage and Film. Just never we were kind of kept waiting for it to happen, and it never really happened. And I don't know why. It was sort of sad, but um, but there were some great things that came of of it. And meeting Jesse was and Jesse's like introduction to you know, New York. It was really cool to be there and witness that. That was, that was cool. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't realize that was like one of her early, That was her yeah, first. Her, her she debut. came right yeah. from Chicago. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 So that was cool. That was definitely cool. Yeah. I, you guys, like the, the casts, the people I, I've, I see like a, one of the through lines of interviewing people is that the, I, I equate this to sort of, it's not trauma, but I sort of think it like an intense emotional experience. Yeah. When you are with somebody, with with people, and with them day in and day out, yeah, and experience these emotional highs and lows, especially yeah. like we're opening a show and it's closing. I know, and then you bond with them in a way that that I, I guess most people never have the opportunity to to experience. Yeah, I, I wrote this whole thing on like theater family, and I I really believe that like um, the family that develops in in the different shows and the different productions, they are so special and they're so unique. And it is, it's super painful saying goodbye to them. But then again, you, when you see them again, you kind of just fall right back into that, 
that thing, I don't know, that just, um, that love never goes away. It really is like, you you do, you bond really fast and pretty deep well, it's working kind of, in theater. Yeah, it's kind of your job to be emotionally vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. And you live with them. You basically live yeah. with them. Like, I remember talking about that with Hand to God, because on uh, uh, for Hand to God on our floor, it was Mike, Michael Oberholzer and um, Geneva Carr and I were on one floor. And I always say that. I'm like, oh, yeah, that year we shared an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> we quite literally did. I mean, it's so so it is. It's weird when you when you aren't doing that, when you're not seeing them every day and the highs and the lows mm-hmm. and all the birthdays and the, you know, everything. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I, I, I imagine backstage it's like, it's actually really tiny too in most yeah. theaters. Yeah. Not so, in here. The Tootsie is so, huge. Oh, is it really? The marquee is so big. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird, but not that that's not usual. Yeah. It's very right. tiny in most Broadway houses. Yeah. So you're, Almost on top of each other anyway. Yeah. And then going through these emotional experiences. And- I think it's different, like, because I, I think there's something about because you're doing the same thing every night, too, that you have to find ways of investing in it um, that are new and fresh. And a lot of that has to do with your backstage life, too. Um, like, when you're doing TV and film, you're just, you have to do things over and over again in a day or in an hour or two. But then you're then it's over and it's gone. So you bond with those people in you know, in some ways it's like the scene work and stuff, it's it gets very intimate and very real and very deep, very quick, but then you move on from it. But in theater, it's like you're you you relive it constantly. Hmm. And it is just as much about your your backstage world as it is your onstage world. So like both lives are are constantly so the offstage world's constantly evolving and changing, but the um but the on wait, what did I just say? The backstage world. The backstage world. world. Yeah, but the onstage world is like you have to you have to work to make it new and fresh. Right. Does that kind of make sense? Oh makes, yeah, it makes total sense. So you do, you you bond in like a different way. Have you ever been in a situation where Backstage or offstage, you just like you get totally annoyed with people and you get in a fight and then you have to go and like be in love with them on stage or yeah. something. Well, I mean, yeah, that's life, yeah. right? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? Have you? I feel, Every like you day. I feel like that's a loaded question. You've got stories. That's called being married. <laughs> yeah, we're human. You know, we get on each other's nerves, but but I, I don't know. I've been lucky. I've I've had some. I can't think of a cast that really was hard to be around. I really can't. I've loved all of the people and the experiences that I've gotten. It's, I, I've sort of noticed that as the more experienced everyone gets, the more, um, I guess, the closer towards your high-end professionals. Like in community theater, everyone, I mean, nothing against community theater, but right. it's like, I've worked with so many people who think they are divas Mm -hmm. in community theater. Big Mm -hmm. fish in a small pond. Yeah. And, or like when I was doing regional theater, I would work with these kids um, who were like straight out of conservatories who were always the the hot shit in their their hometown and they get out in the real world and they're like, what do you mean I'm not getting the lead? I don't deserve to be in the back. I'm like, yeah, everyone has got to eat a little bit of of humble pie. Right, right, right. Every now and then. But then... It is so hard to exist in this city yeah, and exist in the Broadway world mm-hmm. and exist in theater in general. That mm-hmm. like, if you've made it to where you are, that you're just like, yeah, this is, we're, we're all normal people. We're all like, we worked our ass off to be here. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I think it's like, uh, I have to say this cast in particular, Tootsie, um, is just so lovely. And I think it's because everyone in the cast is so good at what they do and they're and the work the material is so good and they're getting all of us are getting to do what what makes us special and unique so um there's confidence in that and there's there's really i think it's it all comes out of insecurity right that's when things start getting weird like so there isn't any of that like everybody's super confident in what they do and we have deep respect for each other and so um there's there's none of that i don't know there's really isn't any of that weirdness nobody's trying to like one up each other or trying to um prove themselves cuz it's all been proven everybody gets their laughs and you know does great work and 
we make each other laugh. God, rehearsal was so much fun. Yeah. It's a crazy town. Or I, I can imagine. I mean, I've seen the show. It's it made me laugh so hard. Oh, it's good. Like the the <laughs> Robert Horn, he he won the Drama Desk Award for best book. Mm-hmm. Just and the incre- Tony. And and the Tony, yeah. Yeah. Um just amazing, amazing, amazing work. Um when how when did you get involved with with the project? Like how long have you been with the show? Um I did a reading. So um, Scott Ellis, I'd never worked with before, and they asked me to do a reading at second stage of a different project, and I really wanted to work with him, and I I loved the people involved and thought the project was cool. And so um, I did that, and it was, was, you know, one of those really quick in and out kind of things, and I made some big – I took some big swings (laughs) at like – this character that I was playing, which was sort of a, a wild lady. Uh, but it was a very funny piece. And Scott was, it was, I loved working with him and I could tell he liked working with me too. And at the end of that uh, project, he said, you know, I have something that I think you're really right for. I'm going to be contacting your agents. And I thought, oh, well, okay, whatever. We'll see if that happens. But he did like two months later. Did it take that long? I think it did. Maybe a month, two months. He um, contacted them and said, uh, I want her to do this reading of Tootsie. And they sent me the script. They said, are you interested? I read the script and I was like, oh my God, I know her. I have to play her. It just was this like <laughs> feeling. She just leapt off of the page. I could hear her immediately. I could see her. And um, we did the the reading, the, which was just a table read. Again, super fast. They taught me the song which the first time I heard the song, I just about shit my pants. I was really freaked out. The Patter song? I was like, oh, God, girl, there's going to be so much stress what's having to learn this. Yeah, yeah. what's going to happen? Learning it and doing it for the first time, I was like, oh, my God, I'll never be as nervous as when I have to do this, you know? But um, but it also was so good. I was like, <laughs> you know, I was very excited. But anyway, so I learned the song and did the, the table read, and they uh, called – very soon after that, it was like a month later, They, I got a call from my agent and manager. They, they conference call me whenever I have, either when I've booked something or when I'm fired for something. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't auditioned for anything because it was like Christmas. It was, you know, the holidays. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, why are you both calling me? What is going on? And they said, you know, uh, they want to offer you the out of town town in Chicago and the Broadway contract. And I went, what are you talking wow. about? I didn't even know it was going out of town. There hadn't been any press on it yet. So yeah. I didn't realize it was that close, you know, that all that. And um, and I think I said to them, I was like, are you, are they sure? Because that's like months from now. They, don't they want to like look at other people? Like, are they sure they want to commit to me? And they're like, what is wrong with you? You're so Sandy Lester. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but was, I got over that real quick and was like, yeah, let's make this yeah. happen. Well, Sandy Lester got you your second Tony nomination. <laughs> it did. Congratulations. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, God. I love the character. Um, yeah, Sandy is such a neurotic I character. Know. It's funny It's funny that you said um, it, that in the, in the show now, like, everyone's secure and everyone's happy. Oh, there's yeah. There's no dramas. Like, that is... Sandy Lester is nothing but no, insecurity. No, but I am very secure in how I play neurotic. <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, in 1982, the film originally came out, Tootsie, uh-huh. which was 37 years ago. Um, obviously, a lot of the traditional tropes about um, you know gender roles and women specifically have been updated yeah. since then. Uh, were you, when you knew that, like, okay, this project is Tootsie. Did, mm-hmm. was, did anything like this run through your mind? Or were you like, oh, I want to see how uh, they did it? Because, like, the Me Too movement is all part I of this know, time frame? I should say yes, but I'm going to say no. And I think that this is why I'm not, like, I really want to, like, write and do and create my own content and all those things. But I don't, I don't do the big picture thing. I really, I go into roles, like, and when I'm reading scripts and when I'm thinking about things, just very singularly focused on what the character, just the character. And to me, the the script that I got felt like this is someone that totally lives in this time period. And it didn't feel, um, I didn't see her as a victim. I really didn't. I didn't think she sounded like that. And I think I found her to be actually very brave, even in um, 
in the writing of it. So, um, I, yeah, I didn't, God, I got asked about this so much during the whole award season and I never had good answers. It's hard. I mean, I think Robert Horn did a great job and David Yazbek and Scott Ellis. They really, they worked really hard. I know Santino and Lily worked very hard to make sure that it felt current and it wasn't offensive and all of, um, and all of the things that need to be to fit into this this era, which is very different. What but, kind of, of audience feedback do you get? Do you get anything at the stage tour? About that specifically? Well, yeah, specifically, but then I guess more in general, is there, um, well, I guess, yeah, start with that. Is there well, anything specifically about the, 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 the feed, tropes? The feedback I get um, mostly when people want to talk to me about it is they just say, oh, I'm so glad that I feel like I'm being represented up there. And I think um, what I love about that is people really, they see her and see how destructive, self-destructive she can be and neurotic, and she can be totally narcissistic and crazy at times and insecure and all the things, but she's still completely lovable and, and succeeds and never... In, in a lot of ways, not maybe, and she doesn't get the role necessarily, but she doesn't stop. Like she, she's, she keeps trying and, um, and there's a lot of, uh, strength in that. And so I think when people are telling me, man, I can see my, they're, they are proud to say that. And I like that, you know, like mm-hmm. they're, they're like, I feel like that's me. And they have a huge smile on their face. So it's not like, oh man, that's me. Let's all go kill ourselves. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I I I feel like that's um I, I don't know I'm proud of that, um but that's mainly what I get at the at the stage door yeah they don't talk to me as much but I know Lily gets a lot of that because Lily has made this very uh, a character that um it's very different than it was in the movie mm-hmm. God I you know I haven't seen the movie in so long me neither I didn't want to because I didn't want Cary Gar I just all I remember is that she's incredible in it and I watched a couple of clips and I was like nope can't do this because. She's too good, and I don't want – and I, I know I can't do that. So I don't want to get in my head about it. Well, you that. do you, and you're you incredible. You do you, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're incredible. Obviously, like, you got the Tony Nom, so, oh, well, so you, yeah. you are very, very good <laughs> as well. I, no, I feel, I feel good. I feel yeah. good. I feel like I found my way in to her. <laughs> yeah, that's um, – that's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy I enjoy how different each character is. Yeah, they are, right? Yeah. Everybody's different. Everybody's unique. And like you said, everybody stands up there and they like the um the the relationship between Santino and and his his roommate, the Andy. guy. Andy. Yeah, Andy. Oh my god. It like he's just like, whatever, I'm not taking this shit from you. Oh, there's and, so it's such a buddy comedy, yeah, really. I mean, yeah. it's like a, that's the that's kind of the love story right there. They're like the best couple in the show. I know. I'm so happy you, that <laughs> Sandy ends up with him. Spoiler alert. I know. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but how do you balance all of the, like you were talking about uh, Billions, or we haven't talked about Billions. Oh, yeah, you're on yeah. Billions season uh-huh. four. You're on Get Shorty season uh-huh. three. Um, now, and you're still doing Tootsie. Do they let you out of shows to go film? How does that work? Yeah, so I don't know how I got so lucky, but I'm working with such amazing people on all of these projects and they have really uh, bent over backwards to make it possible for me to do all of this stuff. So, because originally I was, um, I'm as, I was a series regular on Get Shorty. So what that means is they own you basically. So Mm -hmm. um, when we were in negotiations for Tootsie, we weren't sure I was going to be able to do it because um, technically I, 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 couldn't. Uh, but uh, Davey Holmes, who's a showrunner of Get Shorty the Creator, is, he's always been so supportive of my Broadway life and that I am a theater baby at heart. And so much so that in season one, I started off just as the secretary of Ray Romano's character, Rick. And uh, when he found out that what my background was, because he didn't know, um, he wrote in that I was a singer. And since then, it's totally evolved. And I cannot wait for people to see what happens in season three. And I cannot spoil it. But if you are a fan of Broadway and of Tootsie, and you're going to freak out. That's all I'm going to say. That sort of really spoils a lot. But um, 
but it's very exciting what they've done in season three with my character. So, uh, this, so they let me, you know, he basically gave me his blessing to come and do this project. And then turns out Scott Sanders, who's our producer on Tootsie is a huge Get Shorty fan. (laughs) So in return, he's been super gracious and been like, yeah, go off and film when you need to. I mean, they, they wanted me during, they, they started shooting season three during all the award season. And so I was not available. So this last week they shot, um, I did all of my scenes for four different episodes in four days. Oh. But that's crazy. Like nobody does that. Like they literally waited. There were different directors and different, I mean, it's, it's, I got, I'm so lucky to be working with these people who, um, really just, they want to support the work. So yeah. it's been great. And Billions, Billions shot, um, this fall and I was, I wasn't in, which episode was it? My, my last episode was supposed to be episode 10 because we were just starting rehearsals for Tootsie. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, actually it started off when we were in Chicago. So we were in Chicago doing the out of town and they were flying me, they're flying me to New York to shoot billions on my day off. And then I was flying back to Chicago and doing, you know, we're doing like tech and like previews. It was, it was actually kind of, that was pretty brutal. Um, but then, uh, and then when I got home, we had that hiatus. I shot Billions. And then when Tootsie started back up again, I was supposed to end for ep- episode 10 so that I could just jump back into Tootsie because they really couldn't give me the time off. And then they wanted me for the last episode. And that happened, the scene that they wanted me for happened to be the first day of tech for us at the marquee. Mm-hmm. And I'm not in the first um Op- the opening number in the f- in the first transition, so they let me go and shoot it because they knew they wouldn't get to me that day. Oh wow! So like people have been, I mean, my God, I've been so so lucky. They've they've really been working their butts off to make it all happen. That's nice. I mean, that yeah. speaks that speaks to your character too. I think Aww. to your to your character as a real person, <laughs> not your character on stage. You know <laughs> that people are so willing to bend over backwards to Aww. work for you. And make your career work. I think yeah. that, I think that uh, says well, a lot. Thank you. I, I, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think, I hope so. <laughs> so in, in Get Shorty, and mm-hmm. we were talking about this a little bit off mic, that there's a lot of nudity. Yeah. Yeah. In Get Shorty. Uh-huh. Do, did you, were you handed the script and you were like, so by the way, there's going to, you're going to well, be they, like totally they, naked. Yeah. They asked me about it. So. The fr- <laughs> that actually wasn't even the first time I got naked. The first time I got naked <laughs> was in I'm Dying Up Here with Showtime. Uh, did, you, did you ever see that show, I'm Dying Up Here? Mm-mm. It was Jim Carrey produced it. It was all about stand-up comics. And I played, literally, this. I played Tony the Tiger. That's what they called her. And um, she was a chuckle fucker, which is a fangirl. Of for, comedians. Yeah, of yeah. comedians. I didn't even realize that was a real thing. So um, that was the first time I signed a nudity writer, and I had to do like three different really weird sex scenes for that as a guest star. So you just like fly in, and you're like, hi, nice to meet you. And here I am, <laughs> totally naked. But it was such a fun character and such a cool – it was such a great episode that I was like, yeah, I'm definitely game. I'm definitely going to do it. Um and then when Get Shorty happened, you know, I don't know. It, it was such a great moment for my for my character. And it was totally different than the last one. It was very vulnerable. And it was fully nude, which I hadn't done yet. I had to wear a Merkin, which I named Sylvia. Do you know what a Merkin is? <laughs> yeah. My well, little hair those, piece. Yeah, those are dope, yeah. My pubic hair piece. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, that was interesting. Um, but, yeah, I... I don't know. I just, I don't want to do, I won't do the nudity if it's gratuitous, but if it like, if it really makes sense and it's going to add to the moment, ugh, I mean, my agent and manager will hate me saying this, but I'll always take my top off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a hippie baby, remember? I was going to say, I mean, there's got to be, there's got to be some, some level of, of personal comfortability you've got to have and personal confidence. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm so not. Like, if you talk to, like, my sister or my boyfriend, you'd be like, oh, God, I'm constantly, like, downing my body and all of those things. But I just I, – there's something about when I get in these women, like, these characters that I play, I consider them, like, they're like my children. Those are my children. Like, 
Gladys and Sandy and Bonnie on Billions. Like these are women that I want to, that I birth and I take care of them and I want to see them shine and I want them in their best light and I want them to feel great about themselves. So it's easy to do that when you're playing somebody else. I mean, I, Gladys is super confident and and is very sexual and very uh, open. And so it didn't feel hard at all to go there with her. Um, I don't know. I think if Sandy had to get naked, that'd be harder. I think she'd have a harder time getting naked. Yeah. I would, In front of people. Right. Because right. she's a little bit, she feels much more uncomfortable in her own skin. Yeah. She grows to feel comfortable, but in the beginning at least, it starts off. I don't know. I guess it's kind of all about that. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm in my own head here. I'm trying to think of what I would do. Yeah, I guess it's all part of it's part of the character. And I I don't remember if someone told me this once or if I read it somewhere, but the most awkward part is taking your clothes off or putting it back on. Once you're once you're either naked or clothed, it's yeah, all fine. Totally. Yeah, the first time, yeah, it's weird. Oh, the first time you get, yeah, with, well, with somebody you don't really know. To, well, that was easier, actually. They Doing the guest them? star when I didn't know these people. I didn't know the crew. I didn't know the cast. I was just coming in, you know, and I spent two weeks working on this episode with them. So I got to know them by the end, but I didn't know them. This this time around with Get Shorty, I got, a, I got naked in episode eight. So I'd already had like eight episodes to get to know everybody and we'd been like hanging out a lot in the crew. <laughs> so that was weirder. That was definitely weirder. Um, but then, I don't know. There's something kind of great about it. And I like that, you know, I don't have like, I'm not, I don't have a model body. I'm like, I'm a regular girl. So th- I like being able to s- be a regular girl and be like, yeah, I can get naked and I can be sexual and I can be sexy. And, you know, that's, this is what, this is what I look like. And yeah, yeah I don't know. I like that. I like that in general these days, there's a lot of representation across the board. Mm-hmm. We're seeing more gay characters. We're seeing, we're seeing more characters of color. We're yeah. seeing more people with your, your like you said, your your normal body, yeah. not your model body or the, you yeah. know, you don't have to go to the gym yeah. 8 million times a week to yeah. get on TV anymore. So Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I really like that a lot. Um, did your parents, do your parents watch those scenes? Like, <laughs> like- I, I made my mom watch I'm Dying Up Here the whole episode with me. And she was like. She, with you. Yeah, because I was so proud of it. And I didn't really think about how weird it was. And if you saw that episode, I mean, that is a weird character. The, the stuff I did on that, it was kinky and weird. Um, but I was so proud of it. I wanted her to see it. And she, <laughs> I guess I will just say, I didn't watch Get Shorty with her. <laughs> <laughs> but they've all seen it and they love it. Uh, you know who hasn't seen it? Santino. He won't get, he won't go past episode seven. He's really? like, I can't do it. Can't do it. It's like, I love the show. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> like my sister. I'm like, fair, fair. I get it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I don't- all right, Santino. Well, yeah. good for you. He's, he, <laughs> it's weird. I don't know. I watch it with my boyfriend. I remember that. He he kind of watches it with his sort of grin, but like maybe painful grin watching it. And he thinks it's super cool, but then occasionally just like leans in. He'll be like, oh, yeah, you're – you're really going for it in that, aren't you? Like, especially when you have to. It's harder for him to watch than making out. That's weirder. Making yeah. out with somebody is like, and honestly, those are the weirder scenes. Those are harder to shoot. It's when personal. You, that feels way more personal than just being like naked with someone, like with these weird pieces that you have to wear on your body parts, like so that you're not actually touching each other. But I mean, it's not romantic because no, there's lights and cameras oh, no, and so like bizarre. a room of people. And you're so sweaty and you're just like, oh my God, <laughs> it's just lasting forever. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Well, it's weird. Well, more power to you. Yeah. Okay, great, great. <laughs> so we'll we'll wrap up here, and <laughs> at the at the end of the podcast's episodes here, we ask every guest three standard questions. Okay. First one, very simply, is what motivates you? Oh, um, what motivates me? God, I don't know. It's it's the 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 love of it. I I love. I love the feeling of, I call it being in the pocket when, and I think that it's a lot to do with the comedy, but like 
when you're just riding that wave and you are like, you are just fully in it. Like there's nothing you can do to get off, to get tossed off that surfboard. Um, that feeling is such a rush. And I've, there's been nothing else in my life that has come close to, to that feeling. I guess I'm an addict. That's what it is. That's my drug. Just that like, laughter. It's laughter. It's the, it's the, um, it's the leaning in. You can feel it. You can just feel that energy. And it laughter, leaning in, all of it is love. That's what it feels like. It feels like love. So it feeds me and um and I keep trying to find different ways to make it happen, not really not just for myself, but because you're bringing joy to people. And so to watch people explode in laughter, like I want to do that for people. That's that's what drives me. And what advice would you give to your younger self and younger people now listening, starting out down a similar path? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I mean, it's that thing about just really, really figuring out who you are and, and embracing that. Um, it's so easy to get caught up in what you should be or um, – what you should look like or, you know, uh, making the right decisions. I think uh, it's so important to just exist in the moment. It's the same thing like when you're on stage, the best work you can do is when you're just really present. And it's like that in life. Like you have to find a way to really be okay in the moment. And that, that will open up all the doors. And last question then, if you could only see one show for the rest of your life, but you can see it as many times as you want, what would you see? Uh, is it like a theater show? Sure. What is it? it well, you pick a theater and a non-theater show. Okay. Well, uh, always Into the Woods comes to my mind because it's just everything. It's all the, it's so funny. It's so joyful. It's so sad and it makes you think. It's just... I think it's the most beautiful, beautiful musical. I really do. Um, so I would see that. And then, gosh, I don't know what the other one would be. Like a like a film or something? Oh, like anything. Show? Or it could be a live show. Do you have a band that you like? Gosh. I don't know. I don't know that I can even answer that. I think it's... too hard to pick one okay well we can find you on instagram <laughs> and twitter at at lulu bell styles any anywhere else no that, that's, that's it that's, just, those just are the, the instas ones. and the twits yeah and you can get more of this podcast more of me at the theaterpodcast.com but you can also use our short link now ttp.fm if you don't know how to spell the theater podcast so ttp.fm slash itunes slash google play slash anywhere you want to subscribe and it will forward you to wherever you need to go you can get me at theater underscore podcast on instagram and twitter Listen and subscribe, rate and review, spread the word. This is produced by Jillian Hockman, edited by Matthew Hendershot. And of course, thank you to Jukebox the Ghost for the intro and outro music. Sandy Shrugs, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> take a deep breath, make the world a little colorful.